Hello, it is Friday, August 6th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday puzzle, and I have been warned that this is another tricky one. Uh, most likely trickier than yesterday's, because of course, today's is a Friday. The second most difficult puzzle of the week. And before we get started on today's crossword, um, I didn't. I don't think there were any particular clarifications from yesterday's. There were obviously the. I think the biggest, um, the biggest issue was my continual uh, misinterpretation of various aspects of the theme, despite broadly speaking seeing the the theme. Um, but I don't need to rehash that. There was quite enough. I made quite enough of a hash of it at the time. But I did want to read a comment on yesterday's puzzle from Churn, who wrote, Chris, I noticed you haven't been doing the monthly puzzles. Any particular reason? The new one is pretty fun, if not very challenging. And I realized I was not familiar with the concept of monthly puzzles. And then I looked at the New York Times crossword site, and here's this puzzle called American Adventures Month, August 2021, by Fred Piscop. And I had no idea this existed. So um, does anyone know how long this monthly series has been going. I actually searched for the name of this crossword and I couldn't really find uh, any information about it. So I don't know what this monthly series is, but perhaps I will do an extra video of that, of this monthly puzzle if I, if I find some time to do so. Um, so thanks for alerting me to the existence of that puzzle. I, I didn't know. Anyway, let's get on to today's puzzle for Friday by Seth A. Abel edited, as always, by the mighty Will Shorts. And um, I don't think I have any other preamble, so let's just get going. Ready to get started? Okay. Fruit used to flavor the liqueur Patsarin. I have not a clue. I, I really don't know. I don't think I'm familiar with that liqueur at all. Culture medium. Uh, so you'd think this would be culture as in culture, entertainment, art, but I suspect it's culture in the sense of growing a culture in a, you know, a Petri dish or something like that. And agar, I want to say agar is a, is a medium of a substance used for that purpose. Alex and blank jewelry chain. I don't know, but it starting with a seems reasonable. It seems like the sort of thing that might be alliterative words starting with the same letter producing the same sound. Hits the jackpot, say, uh, gets something, gets gold. I don't know. That's probably not correct. Exceedingly obtuse. Oof. Well, that's long. I'm not going to try just yet. Go over. Um, it could be revise or reread or something. Let's see. What if it ends in E? Element next to iron on the periodic table. Certainly not something I know off the top of my head. Partner of all. Um, it could be one, one and all, one for all, either of those phrases. It could be any, any and all. Uh, let's look here, see if this sheds any light. Gracious informally, informally. So what is that getting at? Is that a mild mild exclamation of surprise, goodness gracious, that sort of thing. I'm not sure exactly what that's getting at. Let's keep going through the puzzle. This does feel like it's going to be a tricky one. Fertile soils. This could be loams. Blank money. Uh, that is plural. Okay. So seed money, perhaps an initial investment lead into night or day. Midnight, midday, C9 down. With 10 down, miss the boat. Lose out, perhaps? Branch of agriculture pertinent to dairy farmers and cattle ranchers. Uh, I'm not sure offhand. This looks like it might be a relatively easy clue if we have some crosses, but maybe not not so obvious maybe for me right now. A trifling amount, uh, maybe an ounce, uh, not an ounce of sense, that sort of thing. 
Longtime NBA head coach Nate. I don't know, but MC is a perfectly plausible beginning to a name. Oh, animal. Branch of agriculture pertinent to dairy farmer and cattle ranchers. Animal husbandry? Yeah, maybe. Sylvia of Jazz. Not sure offhand. Let's look at some more short crosses. Poster imposter. Um, would this be like someone's alias, maybe, if they're on a wanted poster? I'm not sure. I'm probably, probably not. Source of Ruin. Lisa of a Different World. Oh, is this Lisa Bonet? Could be, could be thinking of the wrong person. Lobster Catcher with an ex with a, with a question mark. So it's a sort of a pun. I suspect this will be Bib. Um, I think for some reason, classically, in, in sort of cartoons and things, bibs often have pictures of lobsters on them, or maybe maybe you wear a bib when you eat a lobster because it's very messy. I don't know. I, I think there's some association with lobsters and bibs, and the bib would catch what falls. So maybe this is Lisa Bonet. Uh, stirrups, e.g. So that's the sort of footwear, not footwear, but the sort of... Um, where your feet go on a horse, right? Or are they the are they the the bits that go on the back of the boot, the sort of spiky bits to go on the horse? I'm actually not sure. Um, I do not have much knowledge in the way of animal husbandry and related fields. I mean, this may not even be animal husbandry, but I was pretty pleased that it fit. <laughs> so let's keep looking. Fictional operator of the Discovery One spaceship. Oh, is this HAL 9000 from 2001? Is that, what does that spacecraft is, Discovery One? Judean King. Herod, I wanna say. Trifling amount. So we've got um, trifling amount and trifling amounts. Always, I, I Easily amused, I suppose, but I always enjoy that sort of thing. And yet, I'm not seeing this offhand. Let's keep looking. A chap. Um, a chap might be a fella, let's say. What N might mean. I mean, it might mean any, I suppose. As in any number. Not really convinced about that. When repeated, name in 1968 news. Ah, Sirhan Sirhan. That would be... What N might be. Maybe it is any. Could it be something else? Oh, it could be and, as in um, in brand names. Often N is used to mean as a contraction of and. This looks like Macmillan to me. Threat that's hard to take seriously. I mean, this could end in time if, I, if that M were in Macmillan. Let's look at this long, another long move. Very long answers in this puzzle. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have at least we have six answers that span the entire grid. That's pretty impressive. Threat that's hard to take seriously. Yeah, that could end in M. Sorry, what was I looking at? Marching band instruments. Oh, fifes. I think this actually came up maybe yesterday or the day before uh, as well. Trifling amounts. Shreds. Ah, yes. Not one shred of sense, not one ounce of sense. So these could be used in precisely the same way. Fathers, uh, sires, and that could be either a noun or a verb. You could be a sire and you could also sire offspring. Um, the term is also used, I believe, in animal husbandry, I think, explicitly. The sire is used to refer to um, sort of patrilineal descent and horse breeding and things like that. Uh, response from Siri. Um, well, I do have an iPhone, but I have never used Siri in my life. I have it disabled on my phone because I, I just don't like the idea of it for whatever reason. So I don't know what Siri says. I assume this is referring to Siri, the Apple sort of digital assistant. Um, maybe I found, does she say something like, here's what I found or something? Yeah, maybe that is, man, I... Having slightly better luck than I would have expected with these long answers. I mean, this could be incorrect. Animal husbandry at this point looks pretty solid. Like a large garage or a small pileup, a three-car, a three-car garage or a three-car pileup. 
1970s or 80s sitcom station. Okay, here's one I know from the crossword. Um, it, it took me quite a few instances of this answer to finally drill the acronym in my head because it's not it's not a memorable acronym unless you presumably know it from the, the television program, but it's WKRP, I think, and that is, I think, WKRP in Cincinnati, I think is what the name of the sitcom. Currency of Laos. Um, ooh, I'm not sure offhand. Juice bar ingredient. Oh, you know what I think this is? I think this is our old friend, the acai berry. Beloved of crossword constructors. Moon of Saturn. I'm not sure. There might might ring a might might be familiar once we have some more crosses. Um, so I'm going all over the place on this puzzle. Sorry, I'm sort of jumping around. I often do that on um, trickier days. On on a on a Monday through Wednesday, I'll typically just sort of plow straight through, straight through because you can usually get enough of the answers without needing to do this sort of thing. But on the on the tougher days, I tend to follow the, the my solve. I sort of follow the shape of my solve throughout the puzzle. And, and um, that way I'm always, I always have some crosses um, which are less necessary on the easy days. Badly chafe. Ah, this actually came up, I think precisely maybe two weeks ago, rub raw to badly chafe oneself. Most highly prized collectible coins. Well, they would be the rare ones, I suppose. Rares, I guess you could use that as a noun. Uh, dice, for instance, dice are cubic, they're cubes. Half blank, latte order, half calf, half caffeinated. I've always wondered if that's. Are there any half calf orderers here? I've always wondered what these sort of. Is the amount of caffeine that you save, that you sort of don't consume, just in the half of an order? And especially with a latte or something when so much of it is milk anyway, is it really very significant? I wonder. I'm not saying that because I think it isn't. I just genuinely don't know. I don't, it seems as though. You wouldn't really be making that much of a difference to your diet. Anyway, who cares? Sorry. <laughs> Foil alternative in Fulham. Um, oh, I see. So this is the this will be the British spelling of saber, um, an alternative to foil, another kind of sword. And the um, British spelling of that will have the R before the E uh, in the sort of French style rather than the American style, which would reverse the Res. So uh, when you see the name of a place in Britain like Fulham, um, that's it's usually getting at British spelling of a word. Okay, exceedingly obtuse. Uh, maybe this is as thick as a brick, perhaps? Yeah, there we go. Some, I mean, sometimes long answers are difficult, but off, honestly, sometimes they, they really help the solve because they're very, they can be very tricky to get when you don't have any crosses at all. But once you have some crosses, often there just simply aren't very many things they can be. Whereas shorter clues, often they're easier because a single cross makes up, you know, 30 to whatever, 40, 50 percent of the, the answer. But, but they could be many things plausibly, especially on a tougher day. Um, okay, the end of time. I'm not sure. I, I, you know, in this puzzle, because we've actually got gotten so many crosses, I'm not going to linger on things that I don't see pretty quickly because we'll, we'll come back to it with crosses. Psychoanalyst from, I think this might be Eric from. I'm not very confident of that, but I think it, I think it might be. So I'm going to put in some crosses. We'll go over. This could be rehash. Shame has poor memory, I suspect, is this quotation by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Pain to a pediatrician. So this has a question mark at the end, so it's some sort of pun. What is this getting at? A pediatrician pain. What is it getting at? I'm not really sure, but I can't, I keep getting distracted by seeing these clues up here, these letters that look like this time. Threat that's hard to take seriously. Oh, I, I see, I see. So this is by threat, this means a phrase by which someone would threaten you, perhaps. So they're saying, not this time or something, threat that's hard to take seriously. I don't know. I, I'm not seeing it offhand, but sorry. Pain to a pediatrician, I see what this is now. Um, I apologize for my, I'm being so scattered here. I'm just noticing things and jumping back and forth. But what this means is um, this will, 
be a difficulty for a pediatrician. This is this will give a pediatrician a tough time, and that would be an imp. In other words, a troublesome young child would be a pain for a pediatrician who is a um, doctor who deals with children. Invigorating. Probably crisp in the sense of um, maybe crisp wintry air can be invigorating. I think that might be what that's getting at. Uh, hits the jackpot. Oh, gets rich. I don't know why I didn't guess that earlier. And then here we have director Cameron, Cameron Crowe, director of a number of films, including uh, Almost Famous, which was my favorite film in my teen years. I probably watched it, I don't know, 50 times. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, the end of time, not sure. Woman's name that becomes a different woman's name when its third and fourth letters are switched. I always sort of enjoy these, even though I don't always get them immediately. I always think they're sort of fun and clever. But I think this might be um, Elsie, because if we switch... No, maybe not. Oh, third and fourth letters, yes. We switch these, and it becomes Elise. So those are both plausible woman, women's names, so I think that's I think that's the case. Foes of the Romans. Um, I feel bad for not getting this immediately, but I suspect we will with some more crosses. I was blank. I was hot. That doesn't, that's obviously incorrect. I was him. I was her. I'm sorry. This is, I'm sorry if you're seeing this. Uh, Charlotte blank, capital of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Oh, this rings a bell. I feel as though this is one of those things that's, that is there somewhere in the recesses of my mind, but it's, it's a, it's an, because it's an unusual name for a city, which is why I think it's memorable, but not memorable enough, apparently. So-called father of the Italian language. I think this is, um, Dante Alighieri, who in the, uh, divine comedy sort of codified what we now understand to be the modern Italian language. And then this is now I was had. So I was, they got me. I was had. It's how I often feel when I struggle with the difficult crossword clue. Uh, Will Shorts, I was had. Starve. Could this be emaciate? It doesn't necessarily explicitly mean starve, but could be trig function. So trig is an abbreviated form for trigonometry. So we know that we're going to be using an abbreviated form or potentially an acronym or initialism. Um, and you see this kind of thing not infrequently in the crossword. And what it's getting at is um, trigonometric functions like sine, tangent, cosine, and in this secant, cosecant. So I suspect this is this is cosine. Um, Oh, could this be Let's? Maybe L-E-T-T's? I don't know. Were they foes of the Romans? Let's just keep going. Something you might throw in frustration. Well, you might throw a fit. You know, I might throw a fit sometimes when there's a very, very tricky puzzle. Well, aren't you so darn special? Aren't you just? What is this? Oh... I would like to see this immediately because we've had some nice luck with some of these other crosses, but I'm not quite there. So let's keep going. A kerfuffle, um, a flap, maybe a bit of a bit of a flap, a bit of a stir, a bit of an ado. Fathers abroad. Um, Pepe, no. Completely bought. So th this, I think, what this is getting at is, in, in, in other words, if you've been had, you completely bought the sort of con or the lie or the deception that was foisted upon you. You ate it up, completely bought it, ate up, ate up. Uh, tries in a way. Oh, uh, maybe, hmm. Sort of want this to be sues, as in bring a lawsuit, try someone in a trial, but that's not really the same thing. And I think ate up, ate up does seem correct to me. So this is, okay, so just deserts. It's spelled, it, it, it's sort of phrased in a way that looks like it should be just deserts. In other words, the consequences that are due to you for your actions. But it's spelled deserts, not deserts, but desert as in an arid location. So just deserts. Or it could be just deserts as in 
um, deserting somebody. Actually, it could be that as well, which would be pronounced the same way as just deserts, but with a different meaning. Um, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> Let's look here. Fathers abroad. Well, it probably ends in S. And this probably does too, because it's tries. Probably ends in an S. Um, sips, I suppose. If you just, if you try a drink, you may take a sip of it. What is this? What is we, this, what have we, what have we not looked at here? Stirrups, we have looked at that, but it could end in S. And we, Sylvius, I oh, don't know. Psych, sign, I don't know. Feature of Herman on The Simpsons. Oh, I don't know who this character is. I don't know who Herman on The Simpsons is. I'm sorry. That's annoying. Uh, moon of Saturn. Uh-oh, this is getting dangerous down here. Poster imposter. Source of ruin. All right, I'm going to leave this corner for the time being because it's, it's tripping me up. And let's, um, I don't even know if we've seen all of the clues in the puzzle yet, to be honest. So let's keep looking here. Element next to iron on the periodic table. We're ending in ESE is pretty plausible for an element, unfor unfortunately, in the sense that many elements, I think, end that way. So that's not helpful yet. Threat that's hard to take seriously. If not this time, that's not enough letters. Gracious and formally, things sometimes named after queens. I don't know, boats, ships, uh, I don't know, anything, anything, <laughs> absolutely anything could be named after queens, particularly in com uh, countries with active monarchies. Put on the line, say, could be dry, as in you put your clothes out to dry on the, the line. Let's just see, because I have so little up here, let's, let's try that. And the, the end of time could be something clock. What would work with a single letter, though, before that? Foes of the Romans. Oh, maybe the Celts. The Celts in Roman Britain, for instance, when the Romans um, occupied uh, Britain, or much of Britain. Hmm, this isn't ringing as much of a bell as I was hoping it would, this Charlotte. I mean, it looks like Amelie, doesn't it? Let's see. Oh, we never even never even looked at this clue for this long answer. Title rock lyric before I'm gonna find ya, I'm gonna get ya, get ya, get ya, get ya. Um, I think this is what is it? Uh, one way or another. Um, so I think I have something wrong. So that maybe that's a one way or another. Okay, that was pretty helpful. Uh, lots of crosses as a result of that. So fathers. A bra oh, pears, of course, in, in, in French. I don't know how I didn't see that. That was surprising. Just deserts or just desserts. Oh, well, aren't you done darn special? Wow, this is, a, this is a funny one for a New York Times crossword. Do I have this entirely wrong? Do. Did I completely, am I, am I completely misinterpreting the, because maybe this is just desserts. Is that how that's spelled? Because do makes this look like the meaning just desserts in terms of your um, consequences, your do. I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm feeling quite embarrassed about this, but I feel as though I'm misinterpreting I'm, I'm, I'm misunderstanding something about the spelling, or I'm just misremembering the proper spelling. I'm sorry, I'll have to figure that out. Anyway, sorry, this is la di frickin' da. <laughs> I don't understand this clue. It's, it's somehow outsmarting me. La di frickin' da is what this is. It's a very funny thing for a New York Times crossword answer, I would say. Feature of Herman on The Simpsons. Um, no ears? Could that possibly be the case? Poster imposter? I don't think so. Stirrups. Oof, this is, I was hoping this would unlock 
the rest of this corner for me, but it's uh, it's not doing it. Let's 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 return up to here. Gracious informally. Threat that's hard to take seriously. This is another one that feels like it should be much more straightforward. What is this? Threat that's hard to take seriously. I'm sorry, I don't want to keep lingering on something silently for ages. Um, fruit used to flavor the liqueur, Pat Saran. So no, all right. A thing that occurred to me much earlier was slow, which I only say that because it's used in drinks like the slow gin fizz, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's used to flavor this liqueur. But now that we have this O here, it does fit. And because I'm sort of struggling in this area, I'm going to put that in. Oh, here's one we didn't ever do. Heavens to Murgatroyd. So I think this is... Um, so Heavens to Murgatroyd is, is, an, is an old... It's an archaic, I think, American general expression of astonishment. And I think it was coined by some old-timey comedian, or at least popularized by an old-timey comedian. And then it was used by some cartoon character whose identity I don't recall. But anyway, that's what it is. So it's basically just saying, good Lord, gracious, as, uh, as is clued over here. And so I think this is probably egads, which I would consider to be another sort of archaic expression of surprise or astonishment. Um, oh, I see. So, th so this this looks like now it's lawdy, as in lordy, but a southern sort of diction, lawdy, that kind of thing. Partner of all. So this doesn't now look like any any and all. Ah, I see. Threat that's hard to take seriously. I mean it this time. In other words, sort of a almost a boy who cried wolf situation. You're well, okay. Last time I didn't get you, but but I mean it this time. Hard to take seriously because um, the person has not followed through in the past. Alex and blank jewelry chain could be Ali, Annie. Probably not Ali because that is a different. Um, although Ali can be pronounced Ali actually, so. Ollie, Annie, Amy, Alex, and Amy. I want to say this ends. This not ends. I want to say this is an N. That seems more plausible to me, just based on the way elements sort of sound syllabically. Old Hollywood actress born in Austria, Hungary. Ah, um, okay. Too bad I didn't look at this earlier. We we this 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 actress actually came up in a puzzle a couple weeks ago. I don't remember if it was her given name or her surname, but it, I think this is Hedy Lamar, who I think, as I mentioned previously, is an extremely interesting figure, who's an inventor as well as a uh, very successful um, Hollywood actress. And she invented a sort of, I think, a radio technology that was had military applications, but now is a foundational part of, of Wi-Fi. So very interesting person. Uh, but I, I don't remember if it's, I think it's two R's rather than two A's here. Things not sometimes named after queens. Ah, I see. So eras, in other words, the Victorian era. We're currently living through the second Elizabethan era, for instance, with respect to British monarchs. Um, got ready for a photo, say. Ah, smiled. Ah, okay, so this is manganese, the element, and that does confirm this is Alex and Annie with an N. All right, so we're, we're almost there. Um, I just need to close out this corner. Oh, uh, stirrups. Poster and po Oh, poster. Okay. So the question mark, I should have been thinking about the question mark more actively. This isn't saying poster, in other words, this is not saying poster in the sense of a, I don't know, a placard or a illustration on a wall. It's saying poster as in someone who posts online. And certainly in the current era in our, in our time, um, something that is happening, or at least constantly alleged to be happening and presumably happening to some extent legitimately, is the prevalence of bots um, posing as legitimate social media users. So that's what that was getting at. Feature of Herman on The Simpsons. Oh, one arm. One arm is a lot more plausible than no ears. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking there. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. 
Uh, I don't know this moon of Saturn. It's not ringing a bell, unfortunately. Source of ruin. Could be your bane. In other words, you're brought to ruin by by your, your great nemesis, your bane. It could be that. Stirrups. Oh, hmm. I kept thinking this was bones. I did keep thinking that before, but I was sort of reluctant because, I don't know, I just didn't really understand what the relationship was. Is a stirrup also a, a bone? Is that... This might just be a piece of knowledge I don't have, but it looks like it might be. Uh, so this will be Syme or Sims. And I think this is the last letter in the puzzle. So I'm going to have to, I may have to sort of take an educated guess here. Um, Tethys looks, I, I don't think I'd know this moon of Saturn, but Tethys looks much more plausible than Tethy. And Sylvia Sims, I don't know, it sounds right. Let's try it. Okay. So that was the Friday puzzle. That was a tricky one, but um, but there were quite a few crosses gained from these very... I, I had a, a very lucky early break, I think, with animal husbandry. Um, that was that was very helpful. Um, and, and here's what I found actually came relatively early on as well. And so these two opened up a lot of crosses for me. Oh, you know what? I never looked back at this. The end. Oh, this is very clever. The end of time o'clock. In other words, nine o'clock, five o'clock. It's the end of a time. A time is five o'clock. And so o'clock is the end of it. Very nice. Well done. That was good. Um, yeah, a, a really nicely well-constructed puzzle. No particular theme really. Um, just a good, I think, ambitiously set grid with some long answers that are well clued. I mean, this is so funny. La di frickin da. I mean, what an odd, <laughs> what an odd thing to put in a puzzle. I'm sure it's difficult to get these big, you know, to come up with, um, with good solid answers that are, that are this long. They have to be precisely, if you want to fill the grid, they have to be precisely the length of the full grid. Um, I just find that so funny. It's so, so, idiosyncratic, I suppose, as a, as a crossword answer. Because usually the things that are uh, sort of non-standard speech or uncommon speech, they're usually very short, um, very short answers because they're used to kind of fill in little nooks and crannies in the grid that need extra vowels, things like that. Um, but this is, this is uh, an ambitious, <laughs> an ambitious idiosyncratic phrase. Um, and then we've got our old friend Asai Berry. Asai, exactly one of the things I'm talking about. Lots of vowels, common vowels in there to fill things out. Um, w, WKRP. This is a tricky one, I would say. If you haven't, if you either didn't, you know, if, if you're simply aware of this program, obviously this would be an incredibly easy clue. Um, if you're not, I would suspect you're mainly going to know this, at least as I did from the crossword. Um, so just one of those things you have to sort of get used to. Um, oh, I never looked back at this currency of Laos, Kip. You know, just didn't know that. So so that would be tough, actually. This cross of WKRP and Kip, um, that's always the real killer, right? When there are two crosses meeting in a corner and there's no... If you had... Even if you had every single other letter filled, you might simply have nothing to go on there. That's always pretty rough. Not much you can do about that, to be frank, without either looking it up or just over time learning this vocabulary. Um, but yeah, I actually really enjoyed that puzzle. I got um, a, a good amount of resistance. I think an amount of resistance that I sort of enjoy for a Friday puzzle, um, but um, pushed through it over time by sort of jumping back and forth between the areas where I had where I had some crosses to help me out. Um, and uh, yeah, I wish I would have vocalized my speculation about slow earlier. Um, but I guess to be, to be frank, it was really, it was, it was just a guess based on associations with alcohol, which I suppose makes this a good clue. I mean, it's a, it's a good clue in the sense that, um, I, probably most people are not familiar with this liqueur. I wasn't, I'll look it up after this video. Um, but by, by cluing it with another alcoholic, alcohol related, um, concept rather than, I don't know, 
what color it is or where it grows or or something like that, which would have been, you know, wouldn't have given any context as to what it might be. I mean, that might be more of a Saturday method, right? Uh, Saturday, the most difficult crossword, maybe you would clue slow with something more vague than this or, or less um, less of an allusion to another usage. Anyway, um, one final thing, actually, since we're here, agar, just to bear in mind, this comes up in crosswords. <laughs> another one of those, another one of those things. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, that was the Saturday, that was the Friday crossword. Um, probably a tough one for some folks, um, but I did enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed it as well, and I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please subscribe on YouTube so that you will see each of these videos as they're posted every day. I have to go up each morning. And if you're particularly enjoying it, why not tell a friend? Share the news of this incredibly chill series with someone who might appreciate it. And finally, again, if you are particularly appreciating the series and you would like to become invested in its ongoing um, feasibility, let's say, you can donate uh, a small amount um, to that very purpose through my coffee page, which is linked underneath the video. And um, yesterday, the coffee service also enabled subscriptions. So you can choose to make your small donation recur every month if you would like, um, I suppose, to uh, to financially uh, concretize a symbolic ongoing investment into the into the sustainability of this endeavor, uh, you can do that. And a few people already have, and I, I really appreciate that. It means it means a lot to me. So thank you so much to everybody who has who has done so. And if that isn't practical for you, thanks for simply watching. I appreciate it. And I hope you will do so again tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle, most likely the trickiest puzzle this week. So I'll see you then. Have an excellent Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.